Good morning. Well, another day. We got some beans to spray, but there's a there's a rain shower just to the west that we might get a little bit. And you can't spray right in front of a rain. It's got to have time to at least dry on the plants and a couple of hours to get absorbed ideally. So we're going to wait this one out and see if it's actually going to rain or not. Um, I could work on my landscaping stuff down there, but if it's going to rain in the next 10 or 15 minutes, that's not going to get me very far. So i got a little work to do in the shop here this morning. So I have a little trimming I need to do, and um, well, we have a we have a Milwaukee uh, electric trimmer, string trimmer that works pretty good. However, what I need to do is a little bit thicker stem stuff, and I would like to use this blade. And well, that would be sort of difficult to get off. So I have this old Cub Cadet string trimmer that this goes on pretty easily, uh, but it hasn't run in several years, so. Let's see if we can make this thing run. I just filled the gas tank up and we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens here. We're two poles in and we already got it to start, try to start. Maybe. switch this end out. That went far easier than I thought it was going to. Okay, well what I thought was the hard part turns out was the easy part. So I got the string trimmer portion off. And put this on there and then and then this goes on there and then you need the little nut that goes on here right? Well turns out that's left-handed threads. I lost the nut. It's probably down in my seed warehouse somewhere where this has been stored, but I didn't find it when I was looking through things the other day, and I didn't realize it was left-handed. We don't have a supply of left-handed threads and nuts here, and I'm not sure if I go to the local hardware store, they will have what I need either. In fact, I'm not even sure what size this is. If it's metric, if it's not, it's 20 threads per inch. I got a little threads gauge on it, and that's what it shows, so I think it's a 3 8 20 threads per inch left-handed thread nut but I'm not real sure. So I can find them online in the parts diagram for the trimmer or I see if I can track one down locally. So this trimmer was laying down over there. The the blade and the, the, the washer thing were back in that corner and then I just looked over here and look, there's a little lonely nuts laying right there. I'm pretty sure that's what we needed. Yes! Unfortunately, this rain is falling apart. We might get a few sprinkles about like last night. That's not even enough to get the ground wet. Ah, bummer. There was a pretty good shower to the west. Some of those guys over in southwest Michigan got a really nice rain this morning. I don't know if they needed it, but they got it anyway. And we need it. On another note, our irrigation has been running for 24 hours now, just about without tripping that breaker at all. Generator seems to be running fine, so. I don't know. I've gotten lots of suggestions to switch breakers, switch the wires on a couple. We can do that. I, there doesn't appear to be a rating, um, like an amp rating on those breakers. And the thing is, it kills the generator from like the 12 volt system. So it can't be controlling the, oh, this is the wrong nut. No, nope, not the right one. Darn it. Go back and keep looking. Um, anyway, it can't be controlling the high voltage side of stuff. It's like the control system for the, 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 the 12 volt for the, to run the engine. So, I don't know. We'll have to keep looking at it if we have any more trouble. I had to stop at three different stores, but look what I found. A nut. That'll work. We went on a little bit of a wild goose chase here this morning. We found what we needed. We got, uh, I needed some oil and stuff to change the oil in my truck anyway. So it was, you know, worth the trip to go and find some stuff, but 
Also, it's not raining. It hasn't rained. It's not going to rain. So we should probably get the sprayer out and start spraying some beans. We'll get there. Now you may be wondering why I need such a strong blade on a weed whacker. And also why I'm standing in the middle of a soybean field with a weed whacker. But remember when we planted our plot? We planted it on 15 inch rows, which normally I've been doing 30s. And so uh, in order to be able to have some separation between the varieties, especially in the fall when you're harvesting and you can't uh, tell the difference between them if they're not a different color, uh, we left a row out. Except for some of those rows didn't completely get left out. So we get random plants like that one. And so we're cleaning them up. Some rows are worse than others. Well, we just gotta walk up and down some of these and cut those plants off so that it doesn't throw my plot off because each plot is 15 rows and not 16. And if we have those beans in there, it's not really right or fair. So it's just tricky when they're uh, filled in like this you can see. Just stay in the right spot. Just a couple there, one there. There you go. So well, that's what we're doing. That's what I needed it for. Okay. Um, well, we got a little trimming done there, and uh, then one of my chemical reps stopped to chat and check in for a little bit. And the boys came and rode their go-kart for a while and managed to get stuck in the woods, so Grandpa had to go pull them out and then help them power wash it. All good. We're going to go spray. We are going to fire up the sprayer here, run a load or two off on some beans, and keep this project moving. So we're getting loaded up here. We're going to load up for a full 80 acres, so that's a full 1,200 gallons. We're spraying 15 gallons to the acre. Uh, three products. This is kind of the base fungicide spray that we're putting on most everything. Not quite everything, but most everything this year. So uh, first and foremost, we've got our Miravis Neo. That's our fungicide. Uh, that's a premium fungicide that uh, has three different active ingredients. We've got a strobulin, a uh, triazole, and then an SDHI. Uh, fungicides in there so three different modes of action uh, and then we're running some indigo ZCX that is our insecticide it's got two different actives in it it's got um, lambda whatever this is lambda chythron it's uh, pyethroid and then the uh, thiomethoxin the thiomethoxin is actually the same insecticide that's in our uh, cruiser max uh, seed treatment that we run so that's uh, really good to help with the larger bugs, the, the Japanese beetles and stuff like that. Uh, and then we're running Source XC on most of our beans this year. So uh, that's a two-part A and a B that comes in a co-pack there. And that's what we're using there. So just about got enough water here and we'll uh, head out to the first field, which is actually three separate fields that add up to just about 80 acres. So when we're spraying, I always perimeter, well I don't always, when we're spraying stuff like herbicides or soybean fungicides now, uh, we start with perimetering the field. Sometimes I don't do that with corn fungicide, uh, especially the B5 stuff, although we've been doing more of that. But anyway, usually we go around the outside of the field first and then fill in the middle. Um, on this particular field, one trip around the outside, looks like it's going to be about 18 acres. And that's what our one trip around the outside looks like. Start filling it in. There's 46 in this field total. Well, we got that load sprayed off. Oh, come on. Can't have that. We got that load sprayed off. The wind has picked up a little bit here this afternoon. It's starting to get windier, and so I'm going to wait a little while before we spray anymore. Um, I do need to get fuel up to our generator, though, so we're hooking up to our fuel trailer. Oh. Well, the generator hasn't had any issues for a, a good day and a half now. It seems to be running just fine, so we'll get her fueled up here and hopefully we're over our issues. Our tender truck was still up here from spraying his corn on Saturday. My Uncle Jack's with me, so he's going to drive that back and take care of it. Our fertilizer tank is just about empty here. We're gonna let it drain completely. Ratcheted the tongue down so that all the liquid goes to the front there and it can suck that out. We're not gonna refill it. We're gonna call it good enough for now. Um, it's possible we'll do some more, but we're gonna we're gonna call it good enough for a little while. And uh, yeah, we'll just.
just let our fertilizer or our uh, water keep running there and all is good so we'll shut that off later I don't know there's maybe 100 gallons in there yeah before I go to bed tonight I'll push the little button on the app to shut that off super easy well now we'll back we'll work on our landscape stuff some more here I'm still working on electrical but we are getting closer so we've got breaker box box for a plug that's I don't know it's just kind of hanging there which is probably the temporary fix that's permanent until it's not, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And then we got our transformer box mounted there, and that will plug into there, and all is good. So we need to glue all of that and put it together, and we should be good to go. And then, really, we got that in place now. We can run our landscape wire over to there and put the lights, and then we can put our stone in, finish planting our boxwoods, then the stone, and, you know, yeah. This was really all that needed to happen, but the rest of it's got to be there before it works. Okay, so we got that uh, stuff all done. We gotta run some wire yet, but I ran the low voltage wire right across here. I know, you're supposed to bury it, but we're gonna bury it in stone and I wanna be able to get to it later in case I wanna add more lights or something. So I don't wanna bury it um, below the fabric or below ground. I wanna keep it up where it's somewhat accessible. Um, we got, I bought three more boxwoods yesterday. We gotta get those planted, so I'm working on that right now. Well, I got my lights out. So these are what I got. Uh, these spotlights that you gotta put a bulb in. I got bulbs too, but uh, they're they're fairly high quality. Um, they were sort of expensive, but for crying out loud, they don't even come with a dang connector. Uh, so I gotta figure out how I wanna handle that. Whether we're gonna cut this cable and put a bunch of wire nuts and splices on, which I should get some waterproof wire nuts if we're gonna do that, or I go online and buy some landscape wire connectors like what I had that came with the lights for all the other ones that that, that all seem to work pretty well. Um, I don't know, but they should be good. I was kind of debating on positioning. I think, I think we're gonna split the boxwoods and go every other one, so that's three around. I was debating whether we go kind of out here behind this one, but if that grows too big, it'll hide it. If you get inside of it, it's too close. So we're gonna go there, there, and over there. We can at least get the stakes in, get the wires run, the lights in place and stuff, and like I said, that's why we put the wire on top of the ground because we can pretty easily dig it up and put the connectors in after we have the stone in place. I think we'll get a board and a hammer to hammer them stakes in. We've got power and help. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi. And look. My lights are on. I'll have to see what they look like when it gets dark and do some adjustment, but we are ready for stone in here. Awesome. What do you think, sis? Does it look good? It's yeah, it's a plant. See that light? It's really bright. Don't look at it. Closer. We're getting closer. What do you think? I think that looks great. We'll get our uh, crushed river rock on the back side of that tomorrow. Oh, finally. I've been wanting to do this one for a while now. I guess it's only been about a month since we put the flagpole up, so it hasn't been terrible, but got our lights on. Almost done with the landscaping. Sweet. So I got a little bit of this black granite left. Not a ton. Definitely couldn't have bought any less, but uh, I don't really need it in that bed. So this is the same stuff that's around my barn. I got a couple spots we could touch up there, so that's probably what we'll do with it. Brought the hose over to wash off my rocks for one and water the plants and I hear some screaming from over there. You can't see them right now, but oh, right there. There's a couple little boys out there in the sweet corn patch. I think they touched an electric fence. Yeah, lesson's gotta be learned someday. Might as well be today. Wait, 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 come here and tell me what happened. You put the goldfish box on the wire. Yeah. And it shocked you? I didn't touch it. Shocked me. You weren't even touching it? No, and it still shocked me. Really? Yeah. Huh. How did that happen, do you think? I didn't touch your goldfish box, but it still did it. How many times did you get shocked, Grayson? Two. How many times did you get shocked? I got shocked in my arm and my stomach. Ah, did you touch it with your stomach? No, like the goldfish, we hold it and it like went through our arm into our stomach. <laughs> yeah. It's because you're eating them. All those goldfish are swimming around in your tummy. No. 
They're in crumbs. Oh, they're in crumbs? He's got his stomach and his finger. Yeah. Well, you he didn't touch it. Him. I dared him to touch it, and he did, but <laughs> I, I, I put a wean on it, and it shocked me, too. I did yep. not touch the wires. Yep, you can do that. Whatever you do, don't pee on it, okay? Why? Where do you think it'll shock you if you pee on it? <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for today. We got to have a bigger day spraying tomorrow. We only did one load today. That's not going to cut it. So um, hopefully tomorrow's a little nicer, and uh, we should get a little earlier start. If there's no rain imminent, which I don't think there will be. What'd you find? A truck piece. Your truck and your minion. Yeah. Yeah. Here he is. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Anyway, um, so we're going to work on that the next couple of days. Maybe we'll get our stone if it gets windy in the afternoon here to finish this project up. So I'm going to come back out after dark and uh, check out the lights and adjust this stuff. But, uh, yeah, project's coming together. So thanks for watching this one. Have a great night. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Spraying beans tomorrow. Big day of it. Let's get her done. Well, we've got the pole lit up good. Kind of the flags, but... Looks like we need to adjust a little bit. Well, that's about as good as it's going to get where I got the lights. Actually, it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. The flagpole lit up really nice. It'd have to be a little farther back to point more directly on the flag. The state flag on the bottom is kind of blocking the American flag, but you can still see it. Oh, I'm happy with it. That'll work.